Welcome to this OMI video tutorial. In this video you will learn how to install and configure the Operations Connector for Microsoft System Center Operations Manager or SCOM. The video shows the integration with SCOM 2012, but the steps for older versions are similar. Before starting the installation, please check the Operations Connector for SCOM integration guide. Check it for supported versions and software prerequisites and make sure that .NET 4 or later is installed. The integration is done in two parts. First you install the necessary components in five steps, as shown here. Then you configure the components. As the Microsoft SCOM integration is built on the operations connector, it needs to be installed first. There is a separate video tutorial available for this step. Please refer to it for details. Second, as the SCOM connector uses SCOM APIs, you need to obtain SCOM SDK files and copy them to your operations connector system on which you install the SCOM connector. Then copy the event backward synchronization script delivered by the SCOM connector into the correct operations connector directory. As the last installation step, upload the SCOM topology synchronization package and SCOM content pack to your OMI system. So let's do that. Following the Ops Connector for SCOM install guide, copy the SCOM SDK files required for SCOM 2012 from the SCOM system to the Ops Connector system. I've mounted the SCOM file system on drive S and I copy the files from the SCOM home SDK binaries directory to my local system here uh, into a directory which I have created. Now start the installation of the SCOM integration. Navigate to the directory where the opt connector for SCOM that you downloaded from HP Live Network has been extracted. Extract the product image zip file in there as well and run the setup program. For the SCOM connector version 3.0, it's important that you run the setup using the option minus D skip checks equal true, as the installer checks for the old name BSM connector and does not realize that the operations connector is already installed. Follow the instructions and click through the wizard. The wizard might report pending file rename operations, but if these are not related to HP software, then just continue. Accept the license agreement and click install. The installation can take several minutes. At the end of the installation you get an installation complete message. If not, check the log file for errors. As a next step, go to the ovdata.dir directory, subdirectory installation, genint, and copy the ombacksync.pl file. From there into the ovdata.dir conf backsync directory and allow the copy process to overwrite the file. Please note that if you have already other integrations running on the same Operations Connector system, then consult the Operations Connector for SCOM Integrations Guide for instructions how to deal with this situation. The last installation steps have to be done on an OMI gateway system. For this go to ovdata.dir installation HP BSM in SCOM and copy the HPBSM in SCOM OMI content.zip from there to your gateway system and unzip it.
Then, on your OMI gateway system, run install toposync to upload the SCOM topology synchronization package. Then use the Content Manager command line interface to upload the SCOM integration content pack. Now all necessary integration components are installed. Let's now configure the components. This is done in four steps. First, a few OMI infrastructure settings have to be set, followed by the configuration of the SCOM connector using the configuration utility. It allows you to configure topology, event and metric integration separately. Then the connector policies have to be activated and as a last step the integration services are started. So let's do that. First adjust some OMI infrastructure settings. Log in to OMI and go to Administration Infrastructure Settings. Select Foundation RTSM. Search for Object Root and change its value to Data. Then navigate to the CI Type Manager. Select the CI type data Select the Attributes tab and edit the external ID attribute. Change the value size from 50 to 100 as the SCOM integration uses longer external IDs. Don't forget to click the Save button. The Save operation might take several minutes as this change affects all CI types. Then go to Infrastructure Settings, Foundation, RTSM Fuses and select Data Push Chunk Size and change the value to 20,000. Please note that you can change this back to 2,000 after the initial topology synchronization. You can now change the value of object root back to its default value. Now it's time to launch the SCOM integration configuration utility on your Ops Connector system. On the first tab start by clicking Add New Process Set. Then select the correct SCOM SDK version and click Add. Then import the SCOM SDK libraries that were put into the SCOM SDK directory earlier.
Go to the Connection Details tab and specify the SCOM server hostname. Also specify the user and password. The chosen user account must belong to the Operations Manager Administrator's user role. Then save the credentials and test the connection to the SCOM system. After a successful connection test, go to the next tab. Leave collect all events unchanged and check the registration status by clicking check. Then click the register button. Next go to the topology tab and upload management packs. Click on browse and go to the OBE data directory, subdirectory installation, HPBSM in SCOM, management packs. You might have to change your view options to show all files. Select the management pack and upload it. Notice the warning and act accordingly. Upload more management packs as needed. Then click Add new groups and select the topology groups that start with HP topology. I just realized that I forgot to upload the IIS management pack, so I'll just upload that management pack as well. and add it to the topology groups. Now navigate to the metrics tab. There are several metrics collected automatically, but you can also select additional metrics if required. For example, here I'm selecting an additional Windows 2003 metric. You can now close the configuration utility. Then open the Operations Connector Policy Management UI. Notice that there are four new policies added by the SCOM Connector integration. Select all four policies and activate them. As a last step, the SCOM integration services have to be started. Start them using OVC minus start SCOM and verify that the integration processes are running. Then open the OMI console to check if SCOM topology and events arrived. For example, use the IT Universe Manager to browse through corresponding views like the Active Directory topology view. 
Notice that all CIs monitored by SCOM and integrated via the SCOM connector show the Ops Connector policy ID and the Operations Connector fully qualified domain name in the monitored by attribute. After a while, you will also see events from your SCOM environment. And you can now also start to create performance dashboards that show metrics from your SCOM environment. Choose a corresponding CI and add charts as you require. Then edit the chart definition and select the operations connector data source. You are now able to browse through the available metrics and you can add metrics to your graphs as needed.